Are you planning to write a research paper or are you currently writing one? How would you structure your paper? How would you organize it? My name is Fabian Fröse. In this video, I will give you some ideas how to structure your paper. To begin with, first of all, let us think about what is a research paper. Essentially, you would like to write a story. Of course, not a fairy tale, a research story. Before I go into the details of the structure of a research paper, I would like to give you some background. I think that's very important. If you think of a structure of a paper, you may think it's like a corset. Someone is forcing you into some kind of skeleton or structure. Yeah, that's partly true. That's also why I like this analogy of a corset. Likewise, a research paper has to follow a certain structure. Of course, within that structure, there's some kind of freedom. Another analogy, which is also very popular to understand the research paper, would be the hourglass. Both the corset and the hourglass have two things in common. They have a somewhat similar shape. Starting big, getting narrow and getting bigger again. And I think uh, this analogy is also very important uh, to bring this to your mind of how to write a paper and accordingly how to structure that paper. At the beginning, we, it's rather broad. Yeah, we would like to address many people. We would like to address a big topic uh, in more general, and then it goes more narrow to the specific topic yeah, that we analyze in our paper. Later on, yeah, it broadens again. Yeah, we try to make, uh, uh, we present our findings, but then also, of course, we would like to draw broad conclusions yeah, that are somewhat generalizable and that appeal to a bigger audience. I think it's important to have uh, these background understanding of what a research paper is, what is objective, and then if we're clear about that, we can structure our article accordingly. Uh, coming back to the analogy of a corset, I think that's extremely useful because that puts you into a certain frame and a certain structure that would be wise to follow. After having given you an overview on background of a research paper, now let us look more specifically into the structure of an empirical research paper. Any kind of uh, paper is structured usually into five sections. The first section is the introduction. And the introduction will motivate your study, it will explain what it is about, why do we study that, what are the certain gaps, and also what are expected contributions. The second section is the theory section, sometimes also called literature review, theoretical framework, or likewise. And in that section, we will go more into depth, more into the details, more definitions, the theories, proposed maybe theoretical framework, and also uh, perhaps if it's a qualitative paper, develop our hypotheses. Section three then is concerned with methods. In that section, you would describe your data, your sample, your procedures, measures, your constructs in some quantitative paper or in applied psychology. And if you have more advanced statistics, you might want to explain your statistical analysis. What are you doing? How do you analyze your data? Section four is about the results or findings. Quantitative papers, usually use the word results. Qualitative paper, very often they say findings. Essentially, they mean the same. Yeah, it's about your findings or about your results. In this section, you would typically start, uh, typically start with an overview of your data, provide some descriptive statistics. Then you might test your hypotheses. Or if it's a qualitative paper where you have research questions, try to answer your research questions. In the fifth section, yeah, you will then discuss your findings. Uh, and no surprise, we call this section very often discussion yeah, or also conclusion. There are different types of papers. Sometimes it's integrated. Sometimes you have a separate, very short conclusion, conclusion section at the very end. The typical components of a discussion section will be a summary of your main findings, and then you would also explain your theoretical and uh, practical implications and then uh, mention limitation 
and uh, directions for future research. These five sections make up the typical structure of an empirical research paper. What is the typical length of a paper? How long can a paper be? There's no easy answer to this question. I would say it depends. It depends on the journal and the type of article you're writing. First of all, let's look at different journals. I just would like to give you an, uh, an overview of a, of a few exemplary journals. Let, begin, let us begin with the Journal of International Business Studies. Here you can see the homepage. The uh, Journal of International Business Studies recommends 10,000 words for a regular paper and 7,000 words for a somewhat narrow topic. Then let us look at another journal, International Journal of Human Resource Management. Here you can read, a paper should be, be between 7 and 8,000 words. Let us look at yet another journal, Asian Business Management. Here you can read, 7 to 10,000 words is what they expect. And in all cases, these words include, accounts include everything, meaning that would include references, tables, and so forth. Essentially, that would mean for the manuscript, that were, the manuscript would only be maybe five to 6,000 words long. Maybe 20 pages, maybe a little more. That's the overall manuscript. And that's very common yeah, that most journals would uh, ask you to uh, submit papers uh, from seven to 10,000 words. Some journals even take shorter manuscripts. Some uh, journals are more open towards longer manuscripts. So the key takeaway for you here is look at the target journal and, and then uh, modify the length of your manuscript as needed. All right, assuming a length of 8,000 words, approximately give or take, how would we distribute these words across these different sections? Remember, the structure of a manuscript consists typically of five sections. Here you can see the table. Yeah, I've just listed some very tentative numbers to give an overview of how many pages you can allocate to each section. Here these page numbers refer to double space lining and font size 12, which is also the typical way how you prepare your manuscript for journal submissions. The introduction, the first section, it's a very important one, yeah, yet we try to be somewhat, uh, make it concise. Two pages would be good length. The theory section is a very important section. Here I would recommend approximately five to 12 pages length, depends on what type of paper you're writing. The method section is an important section where you explain, it's mainly explaining your methods, maybe three to six pages, and then the results findings. You know, this is very often what I find the interesting part, you have to see what actually is in the data. Maybe three to nine pages, a very big margin, I'll give you some ideas why later. And then the discussion and conclusion section, you know, this is where all your brain comes in, where you elaborate uh, on your implications, that could be anywhere between three and seven pages. A typical total length of 20 to 30 pages would be typical for a research paper. So it's relatively short. Then I already mentioned it depends on the type of paper. Quantitative papers and qualitative papers, uh, they're somewhat different. Here again, it's just a, a rather rough uh, comparison of these two different types. The introduction would be equally long, I would say. There's no reason why the quantitative or the qualitative paper should be shorter or longer. The theory part is often quite different. Quantitative papers, they develop a theory a framework and they test theory. And they would explain what theory and how they test, hypothesis one, two, three, five, and so forth. Yeah? And maybe this section can be a little longer, maybe nine pages. A qualitative paper can be there maybe a little shorter. Maybe it's also more exploratory in nature. Yeah, so they don't have a, a given set the theory framework. Maybe the data will develop that framework. So maybe the, sh the front part can be a little shorter. 
Then what follows would be the methods. Here, I don't see much reason why a quant or qualitative table should be shorter or longer. One common wrong assumption is, oh, qualitative tables are super easy. There's no methods involved. I just interview some people, do this and that, and that would be sufficient. No, it's not. It's very important there also you know, to explain uh, and uh, justify your methods. So here I, I would say in both cases, uh, uh, maybe just for example, four pages. Then you would report your results and findings. In quantitative papers, it's fairly straightforward. Hypothesis one, confirmed, not confirmed, and so forth. Qualitative papers, they live from these rich insights, from rich findings. So it's also fairly common that the finding section can be longer. Discussion and conclusion section is important, is important for both a quantitative paper and a qualitative paper. So just as an example, maybe they're somewhat equally long, four pages. That would result in a quantitative paper in total, if you do the math, approximately 22 pages, and for a qualitative paper, maybe 24 pages. And that's also fairly common that qualitative papers tend to be a little longer because they live from these rich descriptions and findings, and that makes these papers so interesting. Yeah, so there are some differences. Now, coming to the end of this video, let me try to conclude you would like to write a research paper. You want to tell a story. Yeah, that's fascinating. You would like to be creative. At the same time, if you would like to research paper, they are giving given standards. They're almost templates. If you would like to publish your work in, in well-known journals, it's very simple. You have to follow these standards. And this video gave you some ideas of what these standards are. That's it. Good luck with your research paper. And as I mentioned before, there are many more videos where I explain each section in detail, how to write this section. Go check them out. Thank you. Bye bye.